Hello and welcome to Transmission Tariffs. I'm Adam Reed from the Renewable and Sustainable Energy Institute in Boulder, Colorado, USA. In this webinar, we'll look a bit at the wholesale transmission market. So what's a transmission tariff? Despite the odd name, it just means the payment for use of the transmission line. In markets where transmission service is sold separately from the energy transaction, generators must pay for the line on which their energy travels to reach the customer. There are two types of transmission service, network and point-to-point, -point, or P2P. In the old vertically integrated systems, where a single owner controlled the generation and transmission and served its own service territory, there was no need for transmission tariffs because all the flows were network service, that is, local generators serving local loads. As power systems began to trade energy, though, sometimes energy had to flow from one network, where it was generated, through another network as a pass-through, and finally to a third network, where the buyer was. These flows are called point-to-point -point service, and were charged separately since more than one business entity was involved. Recall that transmission lines are limited in physical capacity by their size. They can't carry an infinite amount of energy. Because of this, network flows were given priority, and any point-to-point -point flows were second in line. As wholesale markets were restructured in the U.S. and Europe and energy trading increased, a problem arose. A local utility, who was also now a competitive generator on the wholesale market, could discriminate against competitors by charging higher transmission tariffs to competitors than to generation owned by its subsidiaries. The government stepped in and then required all transmission owners to establish non-discriminatory tariffs. This simply means that the transmission owner must offer the same terms for transmission service to all generators and cannot favor its own generator over others. But non-discriminatory tariffs, called open access transmission tariffs in the U.S. and other places, do not mean that every generator pays exactly the same price. A transmission tariff might include charges for network line usage and P2P usage, and of course the charges are higher for longer distances of transmission. In addition, Transmission owners and operators have to purchase non-energy services to keep the lines operating properly in order to stay in compliance with reliability level grid governance standards. So transmission operators will often buy frequency regulation service, voltage regulation service, or other ancillary services like operating reserves and black start capacity from generators on the system. These costs are passed through to other generators that buy transmission service, sometimes according to that generator's contribution to the need for the ancillary services. So a wind plant on some transmission systems may have to pay more for transmission service than a gas plant because it must cover the cost of the increased levels of frequency and voltage regulation necessary to safely move its energy to market. In other transmission systems, the costs are spread more evenly. If a generator self-supplies ancillary services, its transmission service costs may be lower. Finally, if a flow goes through multiple transmission systems, each with different owners, rates can stack up in a phenomenon known as rate pancaking. This problem is reduced when geographically large transmission systems are owned by a single entity like a third-party transmission operator or the government. Some organized markets with a single transmission operator, like the Texas market, have done away with transmission tariffs entirely and include the cost of transmission in a grid price that is set nodally and paid to all suppliers. In a standard energy and transmission market, let's examine a wind plant. The wind plant must sell its energy to a load-serving entity and is paid for that energy on a per kilowatt hour basis. But it must also arrange transmission service to the load-serving entity and must pay a transmission tariff to do so. The customer thus sees the cost of their energy as a combination of the cost of generating the wind energy and the cost of transmitting it over a specific line. Because the wind plant may be located in a remote area served by a new transmission line, it may have higher transmission costs than a gas plant down the street. This makes wind substantially more expensive to the end user. In an energy-only market, the entire transmission system is owned by a single third-party operator who allocates the cost of the entire transmission system between load-serving entities that sell at retail to customers. Such a system uses nodal grid pricing, which means that a generator close to one part of the grid has a set amount of money for transmission deducted from the money they receive to put energy on the grid. Thus, if I'm a wind plant at a node far away from loads, the buyer will offer me a lower grid price than if I were at a node close to the load, since they have to pay for the higher nodal transmission cost. So the customer still ultimately sees the cost of transmission, but it's more evenly spread than in other instances, because we're not paying for a single new transmission line to serve the wind plant, but for all the transmission in the general area of the node. Moreover, the generator does not need to secure transmission as a separate transaction. This makes a good deal of sense when thinking about the structure of the relative markets. Generation is likely to have more new entrants than load-serving energy retailers, and this system simplifies the process for new generators to get to market. 
The load-serving entities, meanwhile, develop the necessary expertise in dealing with transmission costs and have access to an ever-increasing portfolio of competitive generators to whom they can offer various grid prices. Thank you for your attention.